Right now, Pittsburgh's best sports show is about to begin. Call us or tweet us. we got things to talk about on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. All right, Paul E. Martino, thanks very much and good evening, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call, where, as always, you are in charge here. You make the call. Call us at 412-575-2600. You can also tweet me tonight at KD Pomp. Remember to join us Tonight at 11.35 on KDKA, it's a live edition of the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown, and we will break down what we saw today in the AFC, the NFC, and look ahead to the Super Bowl, where once again, New England is the favorite going into this one. New England over Jacksonville, a thrilling game, and one that came down to the very end. And then in the other one, you have the Eagles routing Minnesota. In both cases, the team with a number one defense in each of those conference lost today. Good offense can take care of defense when it comes right down to it, apparently, and that was the lesson learned. You know, it's interesting that uh, for the three quarters today, Jacksonville came into New England and I thought had the better of the play in a lot of different facets, a lot of check marks. Time of possession nearly doubled that. They kept the ball away. They used a creative uh, offensive game plan that featured not just the running of Leonard Fournette, but Blake Bortles. They weren't afraid to throw him down the field. A lot of dink and dunk. They went down, and when they did go down, he made the plays. And all of a sudden, they went into what I always refer to as a prevent offense. It's almost as if they just did not want to make a mistake down the stretch. And in the fourth quarter, Tom Brady and company normally come to life. They've done it before. Uh, nobody in the history of the game in the uh, Super Bowl era has had more fourth quarter overtime playoff comebacks than Tom Brady by far. He now has 11 of those compared to John Elway at six, Eli Manning and Joe Montana each with five. But the way he did it today after he was not the better quarterback for the first three quarters. It was Blake Bortles. I don't think it was even close. And then all of a sudden, the fourth quarter, 138 yards passing, two touchdowns. Danny Amandola came up big. Field position was a key. Jacksonville goes three and out, another three and out. They played right into the hands of the Patriots, and New England wins. So what else is new? You've seen this story before. And like I said, they will be favored over a team from Philadelphia that played very well today. And Nick Foles, boy, what a good pickup that was as a backup, a guy who at one point contemplated retirement after he was a backup when he was uh, traded to the Rams. They draft Jared Goff. He doesn't want that role. Next thing you know, he got a call from Andy Reid, who used to coach him. And you do remember back, I think it was 2013, he had a 29 touchdown, two interception year in which he was a Pro Bowl player. So he has it in him. And boy, what a great backup he was in this playoff run after Carson Wentz went out with his injury to end his season. So Philadelphia goes in, falls, three touchdown passes. Uh, it'll take place in Minnesota, denying the Vikings a chance to being the first team ever to play a Super Bowl in their home stadium. They just did not look good today. Um, and it makes you wonder, you know, the Steelers watched this game today and they had to be thinking, my goodness, uh, Jacksonville was good enough at the time, but then, you know, you saw some of the things that they could have done, that they should have done, that they didn't do. Um, once again, Bill Belichick at halftime, adjustments. He's the king of the game when it comes to this. There's nothing else you can say about that. He's been terrific, and he was again today. So that game is now in the books. It's going to be New England and Philadelphia. Call us with your take at 412-575-2600. Also going on today was uh, some hockey news and that the Penguins returned home from a West Coast trip in which they went one and two. And they watched today as Philadelphia took on Washington down in D.C. and the Flyers come away with a 2-1 overtime win. What that means is they jump over both the Penguins and the Rangers uh, and only by a point though. It's 54 points for the Flyers, 53 for the Rangers and the Penguins, but they have the Flyers two games in hand. Most teams ahead of the Penguins have hand, which is going to make it tough down the stretch. They're going to win games in regulation, and they can't be messing around with sharing points. That never seems to allow a team to, uh, you know, jump ahead of other teams that are so log jammed together. So New Jersey has games in hand. Um, I think Columbus has games in hand. Certainly the Flyers have games in hand. The Penguins go to work against Carolina on Tuesday night, and that Carolina team was home tonight where they lost to the Red Hot and now number one team in the entire NHL, the Vegas Golden Knights. Marc-Andre Fleury, one goal allowed. James Neal got his 21st 5-1. Vegas has the best record in the NHL, surpassing Tampa. You heard it right. It's an amazing story being written out there for Gerard Gallant and the Vegas Golden Knights, who will be here in uh, Pittsburgh coming up in early February. All right, so that's uh, the stage for you. Call us if you want to talk about that. Anything else is fine, too. It's 412-575-2600. Tweet me at KD Pomp. We're right here, right now, on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call, Pittsburgh CW. 
The Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call is brought to you by Ireland Contracting, putting new roofs on Pittsburgh homes for over 25 years. Call Ireland Contracting at 1-800-NEW-ROOF.